<laughs> hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to the Less D Experience Interactive. That means I interact with you guys, you interact with me, we talk, get therapy together. We all need therapy, child. Look, ain't no experts on here. It's just everyday people, normal people discussing experiences, opinions, sending in topics and things like that. But today is going to be a part two. These men are off the chain. Hey, Otis and Adele. Hello, Paris. Oh my gosh, Frank, you guys are up here so close. So, so let me get some um, information out the way. First of all, my YouTube channel is up. Yay! It's finally up. I really wasn't thinking about doing YouTube, but a lot of you guys was like, Les, do a YouTube. You do YouTube. Like, eh, more work. <laughs> you know, but I went on and, you know, did a YouTube channel and it's called the Less D Experience. You know, don't forget to go over there and uh, subscribe and share. Because what's happening on the YouTube channel is stuff that's not happening here. Of course, I'll share these videos um, on the channel. But what the YouTube channel is going to entail is everything else I do. You literally will be following me around as I get my life back. You know, I've been on medical hiatus from the entertainment industry for, geez, three, four, five years, uh, you know, dealing with the tumors and surgeries and treatments and learning how to walk again and learning. Oh, it's just been, ugh. So now I'm almost back. I went to the doctor yesterday, didn't get the report I wanted. I still got to wait a little while for my leg to close up, but I'm thinking, God, I still have a leg. So I'm not complaining. I was kind of disappointed, but you know, I just have to sit my happy hips down just a little while longer, you know, but the YouTube channel is going to, um, you guys are going to follow me live on YouTube to work in my way back to being me or better me you know, um, in the gym, <laughs> things like that. When I finally, my leg close up, my gym experience on location, when I interview people in their environment and or doing their careers or their jobs and things like that, you know, going to a farm and, you know, we need to learn how to take a chicken from the, the yard to the table, the whole thing. Cause we were taught that I was taught that when I was little. Um, so all kinds of, when I'm in the studio, all kinds of stuff. You're going to be following me around on YouTube, watching my shenanigans and looking a hot mess and being a goofball, probably, you know, because I, I don't have a problem making fun of myself. I don't take myself too seriously. I'm just glad to be alive, child. So that's what the YouTube is going to entail other stuff. And it's going to entail um, the topics that's being um, talked about with people surrounding me right there with me not in comment section but they're gonna be right there on couches sofas laying on bean bags wherever we are so what's going to happen is a lot of you men have been sending in some interesting questions and i got more here in the trusty dusty notebook and on my phone they're still coming in you know how we are black folks <laughs> in the last minute still trying to get their questions in and my phone is going up and down and up and down right now however I decided, because I didn't want to do a part one and a part two with the ladies asking their questions of men. I wanted to have fun with my divas. So what I decided to do is put the divas uh, questions and shenanigans on YouTube, get a group of ladies together, and we're going to ask the questions, you know, that we want to know of the men. I might even throw a couple of men in there. I don't know, you know, but we're going to be doing that on YouTube, going back over the questions that you guys have asked. And also they wanted to ask questions. They've always wanted to know about men. So we're going to get started because I got to leave early. Well, not early, on time. So I didn't have, oh, okay. All right. Adil is saying less. Please do musical chats uh, so we can connect with people and work on something. Exactly. Hey, Nettie. Hey, Michael. Uh, the rest of you, whoever I missed, hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm going to do that, deal as well. But I was going to do that on YouTube, uh, the musical stuff, the acting stuff, how to get past um, auditions, what to do to stand out in auditions, all kinds of stuff, entertainment stuff. Plus-size dancers going to take you somewhere with some plus-size divas are getting it in. Yeah. You know, and I might try to get it in with them once my leg closes up. 
Hey, Nicole and Gary, how you doing? But we're going to get straight, and I'm going to be going a little fast on today, guys. So don't worry if I ask a question and you're trying to type out the answer. You know, we're going to, um, hey, Nadine, hey, Susie. Behave today, Susie. All right. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be going a little fast on today because we have a lot of questions. And I don't want to do a part three. I want to beat a dead horse to death. You know, so I'm going to try to get the questions in. So if I could just get all the questions in, you guys can actually answer them in the comment section. Okay. And so we're going to do that. We're going to get popping. Hello, Gary. How everybody doing? The first question is, and first, I just want to thank you, thank you, thank you guys for sharing this with me. Um, you guys have been amazing. You men have been candid. Some of you, I, I felt your frustrations. Some of you actually called me because it was too much to type. Some of you it was on my Instagram and my messenger texting me, sending messages through whoever knew me. Because if you didn't know me, uh, you guys seem like y'all need therapies, baby. Don't worry. I need it too. <laughs> But in all seriousness, it seems like you guys were just looking for a voice anywhere from anybody to express your frustrations with us. Yeah, we crazy, you know. So I'm glad I was able to be that uh, platform for you guys because you guys are wilding. Oh, thank you, Susie. I love Susie. Says, ah, I wish I could go and get Susie on that YouTube thing. She's a trip. Okay, the first question is, Okay, I'm not going to say your names unless you tell me up here so I can have witnesses. That is okay to say your name, all right? I promise a lot of guys, don't tell who I'm in, don't tell who I am. I'm not gonna call you names unless you go, yo, let's, I don't care, you know, then I, you know. So the first question is, if your partner, this is a man talking, a man, yeah. If you're, I'm looking at my phone because they, they came in through my phone. If your partner has had a prior relationship of a same-sex nature, do you think you should be notified in the beginning or find out along the way when you become intimate? Help me out. Susie, Nettie, Nadine, Nicole. Who else is a female up here? Don't you guys leave me up here by myself to answer these questions. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Hey, Diana. Help me out. All you divas, I'm calling you out to help us, Sister Paris. Please let me get some help over here. Okay, I think I called all the women. Ladies, this question is for women. So what do you think about the question? If a man's woman has been in the same sex relationship, or not even a relationship, if she's had sex with a woman or whatever else should she tell that man before they become serious and intimate i i can only give my opinion i i, I really think in my opinion <laughs> okay let me let me get everybody else let me let y'all talk okay okay what is susie saying susie say, susie is saying uh, yes, she should tell him uh, that in the beginning. And a dealer says, yes, please tell it in the beginning. <laughs> and um, and Susie's also saying that way she can make, um, you can make, hi, Henry, uh, the guy can make his own choice whether or not uh, he wants to stay with her after that. And that goes both ways to me. I think a guy, should also tell uh, his potential love interest if he's been with the same sex, whether it's been a one night stand, an ongoing thing, or a relationship. I, I, I really believe in giving people choices. So many times my choices have been taken away. If I had a certain um, type of information, I would not have dated this one or, or gone through with that one. You know what I'm saying? Diana is saying in the beginning, just to have it all out on the table, it might give a man a chance to get um, a three-way if you are both into it. <laughs> oh, gosh. Diana, we cutting up already? <laughs> 
Um, Dinah said yes. Tell him in the beginning in case he wants to three somebody. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna move to the next question. You guys can keep commenting on that one. Uh, do what you do. Okay. All right. <laughs> the other question is, why do women get a pass on cheating? If she does it, she has a legitimate reason. If a man does it, he got excuses. He a dog. And, you know, so, you know, this guy wants to know that. Women get a pass because if she cheats, oh, he had to beat her or, or, or did something to her or cheat at first, or she had a legitimate reason for giving it up to somebody else. But if a man cheats, he's just a dog. Mm -hmm. He just got an excuse. It's just an excuse. Okay, I didn't wash the dishes. Okay, I didn't clean the house. Oh, okay, okay. Those are excuses to cheat. But he's saying when a female does it, we supposed to have legitimate reasons that we stepped outside the relationships. So you guys can um, tackle that one as well. Okay, Diana's saying they shouldn't, in my opinion, it's wrong either way. She's talking about cheating. They shouldn't be cheating, period. You know, Susan's saying, I sure did have a reason. <laughs> Susie, you don't have to put your business in this tree up. You know, it's good for ratings. Just kidding. <laughs> you know, so what was your reason, Susan, if you don't mind telling? A deal is saying, goes both ways, no legit reason for any. All right, that's what his deal is saying. And Otis is saying, a man's pain is not looked at as the same as a woman's pain. I, I, I'm going to have to agree with you, Otis, on that one. Uh, I, I really do feel that us women get more sympathy points or more compassion or bowels of mercy when it comes to our, our pain and, and our hurts and things like that. And you men are told to get over it or not expected to be hurt by a female or a person. So I agree with that, Otis. The next question, you guys can keep chiming on that. Hey, Keith, how you doing? And so <laughs> the next question, I'm trying to get everybody um, question is, okay, why is it okay for, Women to have male friends, but a man can't have a female friend. He's only allowed to talk to his mama, his sister, his aunt, cousins, and grandma. Anybody that other than that, he's not allowed. <laughs> Ladies, why? Hey, Janice, how you doing? Why? That is a horrible double standard. I know, because I, I, I know people that go, oh, that's my gay friend. He's fine. I mean, he, he's gay, you know, whatever. And I also know women to have uh, male friends who are not gay, who even like them secretly or publicly and makes it very clear he likes her. But, oh, we're just friends. Talks on the phone all night, do whatever else, and this, this, and that. But it's okay. But their male fr um, spouses and and husbands and fiancés and boyfriends, they better not be talked to nobody but Jesus and his family members. <laughs> that's not right, y'all. That, that, ladies, that's kind of wrong. You know, uh, that's not right. And Susie said, no, she agrees that's wrong. <laughs> Crepe Murder's like, yeah, I want to know. I want to know why. Well, Crepe, it's not right. Um, I really think it boils down to us being insecure because we feel like if you got a female friend you got to be liking her or you might you must be hitting it or want to hit it especially if she looks better than us or whatever i guess i'm just assuming i don't know half that's why i got my ladies on here to answer these questions men okay hey alicia how you doing all right diana is saying you can have whatever friends you want you can come home to me now don't flirt with her She'll go, <laughs> you got me laughing. Oh, ratchet, Diana, stop cutting up. She says she'll go missing. Don't flirt with her. Don't be looking like you want to hit it. Or she will come up missing. It's up to you. Up <laughs> okay, I'm going to let you guys tackle that. Oh, thank you, Alicia. Girl, it was two hours of the old-fashioned hot curlers. I ain't going to do it again. It's going to swell up when I go outside. But anyway, the next question is, why do women hide their bodies before, during, and after sex? We can see in the dark. <laughs> oh, I can answer this one. Yes, but I'm gonna give y'all an opportunity. 
but Les can answer this one. Hey, Stephen, let me read the question again for, for Stephen. He just got on here. The question was asked by a man, Stephen, and others. Why do women hide their bodies before, during, and after sex? We can see in the dark. Oh, oh I'm see what you guys, hey, while you guys are typing, I can tell you why I say, ain't nobody gonna see me naked but the corner in Jesus, because I will not, you know, a deal is laughing to a good question. You know, deal a deal is joining us from Mumbai. Um, thank you for. Uh, <laughs> you know, I can speak for me. Now, I'm not speaking for um, all the other ladies. I can only speak for me. Because we're not 16 anymore, and gravity has taken a horrible toll, <laughs> and uh, childbirth, and in my case, you know, surgeries and medical scars. I look like 50 freaking cents. You know, I just don't think a man would be find me sensual or sexy. You know, looking like you know I've been through a war zone. I, you know, and and you know, you know, we could go on about society and TV and everything and media showing perfect bodies and always claiming that men want you know breasts that sit up by themselves and booties that do this and flat tummies and no back rolls. You'll never see no back rolls on the commercials. <laughs> You don't see no stretch much. You don't see anything. Real women have those things. But we feel. We're not saying we're right. Hey, Floria, how you doing, boo? Whatever she got going on, go to Floria's page. She's an awesome person. Got a lot of stuff going on. I think she's starting a television show and a lot of stuff. Check out Floria Como. But anyway, um, and I'm, I'm just, I just feel like if he takes one look at me naked, ain't nothing going to happen. Nothing gonna happen. Whatever thought about happening, not gonna happen no more. He's gonna be out of here. And you know, and can you imagine the humiliation of even, you know, getting yourself to that point and you're about to get down with the get down and he sees that and go, nah, man, you, you got too many back rolls or you too fat or what's that? <laughs> Die die so that's my opinion we're just afraid oh susie's saying i have pounds of fat but he loves all of it her man does all right now real man love meat and potatoes <laughs> yes. i'm gonna let you guys tackle that one ladies answer these men honestly i said i was going to be transparent and honest so you guys can you know be transparent and honest as well we're going to move to the next question oh my goodness this guy wants to know why don't church women oh God. fix themselves up and be kinky in the bedroom? I, I, I just want to say that that's not all women who go to church. I, I, I've seen and I know some beautiful church women that have their hair together and this and this and that, and, and they, they show intimacy in public actually with their mates but i understand this guy i don't know what he's dealing with when you guys send me questions i don't ask why how come is your woman like that i ask no questions i take your questions and i just jot it down if i have time or i read off my phone if i don't have time so um ladies you can help me out all you church ladies who are on there who go to church you can actually um answer that for this gentleman again why don't church women fix themselves up and be kinky in the bedroom uh, a lot of times I would try to touch, I was, I'm going to try to tackle it just a little. A lot of times they're being taught to be modest um, in their appearance and uh, to be, I guess, modest in the bedroom. I don't know. I don't know if he's saying this so he won't cheat or he's thinking about cheating or he desires her to do something else. I really think he should have a conversation um, with her. And if he has had a conversation and she has not complied because of what the church has said or what the church is teaching, um, they need to have maybe a conference with their leadership. And I don't know. It, I, I think it, it's fixable. It shouldn't get to the point where they're going to get a divorce because she's not supplying his needs. Let me see what you guys are saying. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, God, I didn't know you guys are commenting down here. I'm sorry. Hey, Gwen, help me out with these answers, Gwendolyn Cook. Stephen, um, okay, Stephen is saying, real grown A men ain't worrying about no D stretch marks and rolls. All right, Stephen. 
uh, and Adil said he don't agree with something. I didn't even look down, Adil. What do you don't agree with? I'm sorry. Oh, this is telling me to stop. Be quiet, Otis. <laughs> uh, Gary is saying, question, not all, but why are some women obsessive? Because of insecurity. Either they're, they're insecure or they've been cheated on in the past and hasn't dealt with that internally and things like that. So they scare another man that they could get. They're afraid that he's going to do the same thing. Um, and what I think about that is she should have got fixed and got therapy <laughs> or uh, before she jumped into another relationship because you shouldn't have to suffer because of a past relationship. It is horrible to um, battle with a ghost, a ghosted relationship or an ex. Um, Adil is saying everyone has their own plus and minus points. Okay. And Floria, I'm trying to get all of you in here. Um, Floria saying, be a lady in the streets, freaks in the sheets, only for your husband, ladies. Hey, Daryl and Jerry and Kevin. Yes. I wanted to say that, but I'm glad somebody from the church said that because I don't want to say let us try to make them members go straight. No. So I'm glad Floria said it. <laughs> um, let's see. What is Anthony saying? I'm sorry, Anthony. Hey, Brandon. How you doing? Hello, Anthony. Anthony is saying, so men like full, some men like full figured women. So like some like um, slim women, some like athletic women to each his own. I agree. Um, that's another thing that I sh uh, think it should be discussed when you guys meet up, however you meet up and things like that. You know, I, I, I think it should be forthcoming about your insecurities, uh, your sexuality. If you're going to go, and I'm not saying meet somebody at the red light. Hey, how you doing, girl? You fine. You fine, too. You know what? I've been with a woman. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you guys digging each other, you're vibing, and you decide you've been talking on the phone, and you decide you're going to take a step further, go on the date, and you're like, hmm, this is something I'm kind of interested in. That's when you start to convey your crap. To, to give that person a choice to stay with you, deal with you, or run. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I love it. I'm going to try to get to the next question. You guys keep those comments coming. Okay. Um, the other question is, why do women claim they want honesty, want us to be honest? I'm sorry. They can't handle the truth. <laughs> no, really? Really? I wish you would say your name on this one. Really? <laughs> You're right. A lot of women claim they would just be honest. You know, you think of fatness jeans, and if you go, yeah, World War Six, okay, or uh, you digging this one in your job, whatever. A lot of us do claim, ladies, that we want honesty, but we can't handle the truth. <laughs> that comes from a movie. Hey, Nelson, how you doing? Oh my God. Oh, this is a real man. Why is Otis a real man? What did Otis say? I'm just talking for myself, but this man doesn't care about roles and stretch marks, paving away, and nothing else. Those things make women perfect. And Susie says, oh, this is a real man. Y'all, can y'all go do this somewhere else off my page? <laughs> Anthony's saying, the problem comes in when someone likes someone who is not interested in them, and they try to get them to give them a chance. That you know, I've never thought about that, Anthony. That's true. If somebody don't want you, keep it moving. Or you can be fighting, pulling, and picking. Uh, yeah, I like that comment. I never thought about that. Barry Reed, that's my old middle school and high school. Hi, hi, Barry. How's the family? Oh, we can do that later. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, hey, Levi. Oh, Levi. I got a question for Levi. Hold on. Let me get back to the questions on my phone. Levi Little, guys. Say hi to Levi. Okay. Um, the other question was, guys, I'm going to slow up on this one. I got nine minutes. Hold on. This question, I think, is very serious, okay? If you found out by mistake that your partner has had a criminal record like murder and manslaughter, something serious like that, but they has rehabilitated themselves, have a degree, a good job, all the stuff that you want in a spouse and a real man or partner, are you willing to look past that to see the good in that person that you love? Would that alter your behavior, your feelings toward them? And would you keep them around? That's deep. 
Um, because to be honest, a lot of people don't tell you that part of their lives. They worked hard. They paid their debt to society. They worked hard to become the person that you know them as. And usually some kind of messy relative, usually, or some old friend or somebody hating. You know what I'm saying? And so you find out by mistake. You didn't search them or Google them. Somebody trifling told you. By the way, you know he killed somebody, right? You with him? <laughs> people do it all the time. Ladies, with that impact, you if he's your boyfriend, would you leave him? If he's your fiance, would you continue to marry him? I mean, go forth with the wedding. And if he's your husband, would you leave him? Act differently towards him. What would you do? And I always say, do unto others if you have them to do unto you. Would you want somebody to do that to you? You've worked hard five, 10 years, however long it takes you to get whatever degree, and you've made yourself this other person. And then somebody trifling lets your woman know, hey, you know he's a felon or ex-con, blah, 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 blah. I, I just think that would be wrong. I, I, I would not leave a man for that. I, I would not look at him or scoff at him. Now, I would be agitated because you did not reveal this to me in the dating process. We got kids, we married, or we're about to get married, or we've been whatever. Why didn't you reveal this to me? So nobody would have the power to bring confusion in our relationship. You see what I'm saying? I would leave him because he was in that situation. I would leave him because like right now, you withheld that from me. If we're feeling each other and, and we're about to get down with the get down or whatever else, or spend our lives together, why didn't you tell me first? Don't let me find out in the street. Don't have me looking super stupid. Don't have people whisper behind my back. Oh, I got the black woman Nick going. Excuse me. Let me look over here. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, who's bald in chocolate? Susie, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, your, your man is bald in chocolate. Oh, sorry, Suze. Um... LOL at this. I looked my hubby's record up with the DOC and I kept. Susie, are you serious? Uh, Susie said she looked her uh, husband up and still kept him. Um, Anthony is saying a lot of men hate sugarcoating the truth. We really like just saying the plain truth and going from there. I think you're talking about another question, Anthony. Oh, I'm sorry. Susie is talking about Otis when she's saying black and chocolate and bald-headed. Y'all, okay, you and Otis finished that. Um, oh, and Anthony is also saying to this question, he is saying, if they were truly changed, let the past be the past, but you should tell stuff like that up front so your partner knows what he or she is getting into. I, I agree. I agree. And if this person is worthy of you even dealing with, she should be able to sit down, have enough maturity empathy and bowels of mercy and common sense to sit there and have a decent communication and conversation with you and go, okay, baby, um, can you, do you mind letting me know what happened? What happened, baby? And that would also give, cause men, very few men have outlets where they can tell if they've been raped or molested or been in jail or very intimate thing. Men don't, men don't have or feel comfortable taking a part in things that women do so they can get this stuff out, y'all. So if you are a woman, a real woman, everybody like to go around and call themselves queens, but if you are a real queen, you should be able to communicate and understand. Communicate don't mean you doing all the talking. Listening to your man. Let him be feel free and comfortable enough to cry on your shoulders, to reveal sensitive stuff to you. And you not tell your mama, your sister, your girlfriend, your coworkers, you keep it close to your chest and go, baby, I got you. I still love you, baby. Thank you for trusting me. Mm, thank you. Let me go fry you some pocha. <laughs> oh, whatever he likes. Hold on. More uh, statements. Ah, I'm, uh, it's almost time for me to go. Okay. Um, Diana is saying, if they trust you, they should have been able to tell you. But if he or she didn't tell you to throw um, that in your face, because first of all, they wanted to forget that part in their life and begin a new one. Second, they might flip around and you'll go miss. <laughs> Diana, go to sleep. You're tired. <laughs> she is a mess up here today. <laughs> Okay, and um, who was the 
Okay. Hey, Lucido, how you doing? I'm going to try to get to, oh my gosh, it's just so many guys. And I don't want to do a part three. I feel like it's beating a dead horse to death. Um, but, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to end it there because the other questions, I, I, I really, this last question, you know, uh, is talking about how fickle women are. Uh, the, the, <laughs> I'll just ask it really quickly. Um, this guy is saying, why can't women ever answer the question, what do you want to eat? <laughs> y'all never know what y'all want to eat. And then when we make a decision and go buy us something to eat, you stick your hands in our plates and eat all, um, eat all our food. That isses me off. Tell me why y'all can't make a decision. <laughs> and so I'm just going to end. I wanted to end with something a little lighter. Uh, but you guys can keep all the, hey, Renee, how you doing, sweetheart? Keep all of that um, going in the comment section. Uh, I, I thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. You guys are phenomenal. And you are awesome. And I, I like the fact that we're getting therapy together. I'm no expert. This is just a judgment-free zone, a place where there are people who's not disrespected for their opinions, their experiences. We're just discussing our experiences. You know, that's all we're doing up here. And we're just having fun, loving on each other and trying to get each other therapy. <laughs> so the YouTube channel, though, is called The Less D Experience over there on YouTube. Go over there and subscribe and share. The YouTube is going to have things that Facebook don't kind of allow. And also you get to follow me around as I walk into the next chapter of my life after, you know, being off my deathbed. Oh! And it's time for me to do me again. So you'll be following me in the studios, um, on stage in theaters, at, re at rehearsals, uh, on locations, driving, <laughs> things like that. So YouTube is going to have all of that. My, my, my road to recovery and healing, my physical therapy, in the gym, once my leg closes, all kinds of stuff. You'll be given an inside look on what goes on in my life. Yeah. And according to this smart person who just texted me, some, some full body shots, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> if I get the right cameraman, no. So I'm going to go now. It is 429. Um, go over to YouTube. To the, it's called the Less D Experience on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I'm trying to get 1,000 subscribers by December 25th. I feel like giving some gifts away. I'm not going to let you know what that means. Uh-huh. So go over there, subscribe, and share, share, share. You know, just keep the conversations going in the comment section, and I'll try to get to them when I get back and, you know, when I get finished doing what I'm doing to chime in with you. And, hey, um, just, is it, I'm going to just call you Nixon. Uh, when I get a chance, I'm going to go see what you guys are talking about and also have my input on the comment section much later. But keep the conversations going. Hey, child, we all need therapy. Let's talk. Ha, ha, ha.